What's up guys, Rare Spark here, and I'm coming at you with another MLB 2K13 with my shortstop slugger. So, we're going up against the Chicago Cubs once again, and let's check out their starting lineup. They got Starling Castro, David DeJesus, Rizzo, Soriano, who's now traded to the Yankees, Scott Harrison, Willie Castillo, Barney, Gonzalez, and Jackson. So... Let's go ahead and jump into my first fielding situation. But while we watch this in the background, I wanted to talk about the A-Rod situation again. I just wanted to continue the discussion because a lot of you guys seem to chime in in the comments. And I like the, the, the little discussion we had going. Um, something I forgot to bring up last video was Ryan Braum. Now, he's sort of lumped into A-Rod more than he is the rest of the guys who got caught because... He was already caught and then he lied about it and because of the false positive test or whatever, you know, he was able to get off on it a year ago. So, you know, I think he should be suspended longer than he is. I think he should be somewhere in the boat um, with A-Rod, you know, because he already lied and ended up getting away with what he did because of the false positive and he really needs to think about his actions because that guy might have gotten fired now the FedEx guy who was like you know carrying the samples for the tests or whatever and you know that's really unfair and he really needed to take that into consideration because that guy might have lost his job and you know you don't really know what happened to that guy after he ended up quote unquote screwing up the tests and you know it's really messed up and i really think ryan braun should find out what that guy is up to and find out if he was fired or what and go from there and try and get his job back for him because now that he's been caught it's like you know there's nothing holding him back from helping that guy at all and i just i think it's really scummy of him to have lied and it's almost as bad as A-Rod trying to get other people into biogenesis and or like, you know, purchasing the proof, like the paperwork that showed that he was there. So, you know, back into A-Rod, he's been playing decent for the Yankees. Um, they had him miss a game or something like that because of his hip, I guess. Um, but other than that, he's been playing pretty well. But... You know, like I said, it's a little weird, you know, having the suspension looming over your head and continuing to, you know, play. I don't know. I just think that's weird. And I just feel like there's a better way that MLB should do it, maybe, you know. But, like I said, I kind of see where they're coming from where, you know, if the appeal works, then they couldn't have that guy miss games while he was waiting for the appeal because what if the appeal goes through and they say that the suspension isn't you know correct or whatever you know then he could have ended up missing games that he didn't have to so i can see why they do that but it's like it's a little weird you know with someone that you know is going to get suspended like a rod they should kind of keep him suspended and not allow him to play so let me know what you guys think in the comments below, you know, give me your response to the A-Rod and Ryan Braun situation. I know there's a few other players, but, you know, they're not into it as big. They just basically did Biogenesis, and that was about it. So, you know, other than those two, there's no real big player in this. So I think those are the two main culprits. And Ryan Braun probably wasn't that big of a main culprit until he got caught and ended up lying about it and getting off on it and saying I knew my innocence like or whatever you know whatever he said about how he was innocent and when he turns out he wasn't even innocent so he ended up lying to everybody and making a fool out of everybody basically while he got to play last season but as you see let's jump into the gameplay I'm at the plate down 0-1 Looking to get another hit on the day. This one's coming right down the middle, but I know swinging early at the slider, 90 miles per hour. Got to get ready for this at bat. You know, I haven't played this game for forever because I have a bunch of gameplay saved up, and I probably need to jump on soon. I just haven't played in a, lo a long, long time. And watching the gameplays while I commentate them, it just makes me want to play. So, found these away. 
you know, battling at the at-bat, even though I'm down 0-2. Not going to strike out, hopefully. Got to keep battling. This one's outside. I let it go. And uh, does a 99 mile an hour fastball. One and two is the count. And I'm looking to battle until I get a hit. So this pitch is going to be outside again. I'm just going to look at it. Let it go. Two and two. You know, a lot of good hitters, they can take pitches. And that's what I've been working on. Or at least that's what I was working on at this time. Learning to take pitches. And I end up striking out even after battling. So going back to the dugout, unfortunately. But let's simulate to the next event, which is going to be a fielding situation. So, you know, I'm going for that gold glove. Not sure if I'm ever going to get it, but, you know, I'm going to be looking to play great defense all the time for my team. And I'm throwing this guy out at first for the easy play. And that will end the inning. So, let's jump ahead. Going to my next at-bat here. Dun, 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 dun. One and two on the day with a double. And unfortunately, you saw my strikeout last time. So... Let's see if we can get a hit. This one is right down the middle, but I'm fouling it away. Too early, I guess, of a swing. And I got to be careful because a lot of the times I'll see a pitch where I could line it down the line like that. But um, like I was trying to say, a lot of the time I see a pitch right down the middle and I think I'm going to smack it for a home run. And I end up flying out or whatever. So I need to work on that. But that's another double on the day. Two hit day at the plate. And uh, two doubles. So... And I ended up driving in the tying run. So this game is tied 3-3. Three to three. Hopefully my team can capitalize on the good situation. But we have two outs. So let's cross our fingers here. But the batter took a first pitch strike. So we're down 0-1 with our two strikes. And now we're down 0-2. So not looking good for us. We are down 0-2 with two outs. We're down to our last strike of the inning. But he throws a ball. So we're still alive. We're still alive. Let's see if we can capitalize here. If uh, our guy can get a hit. He ends up striking out to end the inning. Could have gave us the lead. And ends up screwing us over. So we're going to my next at bat. I'm going up against Brian Wilson. A.K.A. The Beast. You know. Unfortunately he's gotten injured. And has fallen off basically lately. But. In this game, he's pretty good. So, see if I can get a hit against him. Pitch outside, 97 mile an hour fastball. I'll take that easily. Thank you very much. We're in the ninth inning. We are down by two, unfortunately. Brian Wilson looking to close it out against us. 95 mile an hour fastball for a strike. So, it's one and one now. Got to be extra careful. This pitch is inside, and I'm swinging at it. And I'm hitting it out to the left field. And I'll take that single. Thank you very much. Three hit day. Two doubles and a single. Not a bad day at all. And uh, you'll take that any day of the week. So let's see if my team can capitalize on this. They probably can't because they usually don't. But I'm trying to steal here and see if I can get it. But I get tagged out. Screwed my team over on that one. And unfortunately, that will end the game. So thank you guys so much for watching. Chuck Norris video coming out tomorrow on Monday. So I look forward to bringing you that to you guys. And I'm going to be trying to get a lot of Chuck Norris out later this week as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. A rare spark out.